G'day folks, happy whatever day it is when this video comes out, and god damn, we passed 1000 subscribers on this channel. That is insane. Who'd have thought sharing my opinions on Monster Hunter would spark the interest of so many people, but here we are. I was trying to think of a video I could make to celebrate the milestone, and after much back and forth with, well, myself, decided that the best play was to just dump a whole bunch of opinions at once and see what you guys agreed and disagreed with. And how better to do that than with a tier list? Now, if I did a tier list of every single monster ever, I'd be here for like four, five, six hours. So I figured the most interesting group of monsters that was a bit more concise was, of course, the flagship monsters. As of the recording of this video, there are 19 flagship monsters with a 20th on the horizon in Sunbreak. And before you ask, I won't be focusing on the frontier flagships in this one as I'm largely unfamiliar with them, but who knows? Maybe I'll have a look at them in a future video. So let's get into it. I am Pig Ginge, and this is the ultimate Monster Hunter flagship tier list. Before we jump into the monsters, first things first. What is a flagship monster? Well, it's for the most part the monster you see on the front of the game. The big fella freaking out on the cover. It's a monster that is usually a large focus of the story of the game, but rarely ever the final boss, usually being the player's first taste of something difficult on their journey through any given Monster Hunter game. Their designs vary wildly, which is clearly intentional, and odds are that any given fan's favourite monster is usually going to be one of these. They also often bring with them new mechanics, as well as being a part of an entirely new class of monster. Flagship monsters are a serious staple at this point, and I don't see them going anywhere in the near future. So, let's get to the list, eh? I figure it's best that we just go in order, starting, of course, with the series golden child, Rathalos. Now, what is there to say about him that hasn't been said already? He's probably the perfect middle ground for the tier list, really. Not over-designed, not under-designed, he's red, he breathes fire, he ticks all the usual fantasy dragon boxes while still being unique enough to not just be Smaug. Rathalos is an easy B. I don't hate it, but it can't be my favourite because that'd be like Pikachu being my favourite Pokemon, and that is weird. So, onwards now to... the Azure Rathalos. Huh. Well, it's a Rathalos, but it's blue, and I like red more than I like blue, so it goes in the C tier. Next is our first Elder Dragon, Kushala Deora. Well, I'm a normal human being, so I hate Kushala. It's annoying, it could be cooler, its design doesn't really do anything for me visually, I guess the concept is kind of cool, a dragon made out of metal, and Kushala and Rise was kind of fun, but it doesn't make up for years of torture from previous titles, so Kushala is going to be our first D tier. Sorry buddy, maybe it'll be our only D tier, let's see how we go. Looping back to the flying wyverns, we have a fan favourite. Tigrex. Now, I like the Tigrex. Freedom 2 was the second Monster Hunter game I ever played, and Tigrex is a pretty big part of that game. Swooping in during an early quest to beat the crap out of you, which, granted, most flagships do these days, but for some reason, Tigrex just sticks in my mind as very memorable. It was our first taste of the pseudo wyvern subset of monsters, which continues to be an awesome, if not underused, spin off from flying wyverns. Tigrex is an easy A in my books, just a really good, solid monster design. Next up is everyone's favourite edgelord monster, Nagakuga. Its weapon and armour designs are cool, its theme is dope, but Nagakuga itself just doesn't really do it for me. It's purposely designed to just sort of be cool incarnate, and its appearance in Freedom Unite was clearly to contrast its sleek battle style against the raw brute force of Tigrex, and that certainly landed well, but it's just not really my taste. I can certainly see why people love it, but for me personally, it's probably sitting at the same level as Rathalos. B tier. Next up, we have the face of the third generation. Lagiacris. And what can I say? I'm a sucker for big, cool, crocodile-looking sea serpents. Lagiacris is one of the best monster designs in what is probably the best generation of Monster Hunter, and taking the fight to it underwater is just something I'll never forget. Its weapons are awesome, its armor is awesome, please God bring it back and do it justice, Capcom. We're begging you here. Lagiacris is easily our first S-tier flagship monster, but definitely not our last. Moving on to maybe the most fan favorite monster of them all, and for good reason, we are of course talking about Zenoga. Zenoga is just f***ing rad. It is such a unique design compared to everything Capcom had previously showcased at the time that it's hard to overstate how iconic it is. Hell, until Monster Hunter World, it was the only fanged wyvern in the series. It also just perfectly matched Yakoma Village and the whole vibe of Portable 3rd, and for that, Zenoga joins Lagiacris in the S tier. Holy shit. Gen 3 just really is so good. Because here we are with yet another absolute winner. Bracadios. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Bracadios is my all-time favourite monster. I remember coming across it in 3 Ultimate and just falling in love with the fight, the design, the theme, the equipment, the slime element, 
all of it. Bracadillas just does it all so right in my book and stands head and shoulders above a lot of the other flagships. Add on top of that the way they handle Raging Bracky and Iceborne, and you've got one very happy Monster Hunter fan in me. Bracadillas sits atop our tier list as the king of the S tier, where I doubt it will ever be toppled. Also, it's a goddamn crime it wasn't on the cover of Three Ultimates International Release, but I digress. Heading now into the fourth generation, which has a whopping eight separate flagship monsters, we have the face of Monster Hunter 4. Gormagala. Possibly the only monster edgier than Naga Cougar on this list, Gormagala goes about it a little bit differently. It's kind of off-putting, kind of creepy, but in a good way. It's certainly unique in terms of design and animations, moving around with this jerky quality that never lets you fully relax. And on top of that, the Frenzy Virus is just a cool new factor of the 4th gen games, and adds what the series has always needed, of course, zombie monsters. Jokes aside though, Gore is cool. I'm surprised we haven't seen it yet in Gen 5, but I guess they'd have to add in the Frenzy element, which seems kind of annoying. But with that, Gore is an easy A on my list. Following on from there, we of course have Steve. Who could forget it? Steve, better known as Seregios, is a monster that I feel is... fine? It's alright. I'm not crazy about it. I think it's cool from the perspective of a realistic, invasive monster in the world, and I think it definitely should have shown up in Iceborne. Seregios has cool armor and a cool gimmick on its weapons, but all in all, it's a pretty average monster to me. Sorry Steve lovers, but he's going in the B tier. Next up are the Faded Four. Glavenus, Astalos, Mizutsune, and Gamoth. As a group, they are just an awesome set of monsters. Each one is a different element and monster class, and they really capture the range of design diversity Monster Hunter has come to demonstrate, but let's look at them individually. First up is Glavenus. Now, this is a little bit biased, but then again, so is this whole video, but I'm just a sucker for dinosaurs and designs based on them. It just does something deep within my monkey brain. Slap a sword on the tail of a Carnotaurus that can also breathe fire? Yeah. That's a winner from me. Glavenus kind of teeters on the edge of absurd without going too far, and versing with Adept Greatsword in Generations is one of the most fun experiences I've ever had in a Monster Hunter game. Glavenus gets an S from me. Moving on to Astalus. Astalus is a bug dragon, and hell if it isn't executed really well. If you asked me to design a wyvern based on a bug, it'd probably come out really grotesque, but props to Capcom with Astalus. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I just think it's neat. A tier. The third of the four is a lot of people's favorite, Mizutsune. Making its way into Rise just made perfect sense given Mizu's existing cherry blossom motif and how well that pairs up with the Japanese cultural theme of the entire game. Mizu is a cool take on a leviathan in a post-underwater era of Monster Hunter, but I just can't get on board. I don't know what it is. It's something about the way Mizu moves and attacks that just kind of melts my brain, both in Gen 4 and Gen 5, and I just never have a good time versing it, and as such, never really liked it. And also the bubbles are just annoying. Mizu is joining our pal Azura Rathlos in C tier. Sorry folks. Last but certainly not least is my personal favorite of the Faded Four. Gameth. Gameth is just such a unique monster as a flagship. It's not cool in any real way. It's not reptilian or draconic like the vast majority of the other flagships. It's sort of its own thing. And I like that. I think it is a huge missed opportunity not having Gameth added in Iceborne, as it would have just been right at home in the Hawfrost Reach, but I get it. The thing is gigantic. Gameth also has the absolute best theme of any monster in the entire series, and I'll stand behind that till the day I die. Do yourself a favor and go and listen to it. Gameth joins the S tier for sure, and is probably not too far behind Bracadios for one of my favorite monsters of all time. Moving on from the Fate of Four and bringing up the end of Gen 4 are the Unrivaled 2. The first of which is Valstrux. Valstrux is just really cool. An older dragon that just has a jet engine in its chest and two rockets instead of wings? What's not to love? Valstrux certainly teeters on the edge of the realism balance that Monster Hunter usually aims for and feels more like a monster you might see in Frontier than the mainline series, but it ticks all the right boxes in my book. Valstrux is an easy S on the tier list. The second of the Unrivaled 2 is the Bloodbath. Diabloss. I'll be honest, I've never versed this thing myself. My playtime in Generations Ultimate is not very high and I'm yet to do a bunch of the G-Ranked Deviants. In fact, the only one I've done is Elder Frost Gammoth so far. Bloodbath Diabloss is pretty neat, but anyone who's seen my Monoboss video knows how I feel about the preferential treatment Diabloss gets, so it's going in B, just on principle alone. And so we have made it to Generation 5. 
Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, Rise, and soon to be Sunbreak. Our first flagship here, despite him not being on the cover of the international release of World, is everyone's favorite spiky boy, no Gigante. No Gigante is cool. It was a large portion of the fanbase's first throwdown with an Elder Dragon, and the concept of a monster so brutal it damages itself when it attacks lands pretty well. It's got the goofy gigantic horns going on, which still make me laugh to this day, but overall No Gigante is a solid A tier monster. Next up is the face of Iceborne, a monster that was clearly designed to be the polar opposite of No Gigante, Velcana. Now, I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan of Velcana. I find it annoying, and the designs of the monster itself and equipment don't really do anything for me. In fact, I'd probably put it in D tier if it wasn't for the fact that it just works really well with the themes of Iceborne and when contrasted with Nerg, so it gets a spot in the C tier. Second to last now, we have the face of Monster Hunter Rise, Magna Malo. With Gen 5 continuing to diversify the Fanged Wyvern class of monsters, Magna Malo works really well as a unique and stylish fight. It fits well with the rest of Rise thematically, and whilst I do have my problems with Rise as a whole, Magna Malo certainly isn't one of them. Magna Malo is a cool demonic samurai cat and gets an A-tier placement from me. And Lucky Last is of course set to be the flagship of Sunbreak, Malzino. Now, my knowledge of this monster is obviously very limited. Given that the game isn't out yet, we don't even have its icon here to use, so we have to basically go off visual design alone. So far, it would seem that Sunbreak is leaning into a more gothic European thematic, contrasted against Rise's existing Japanese aesthetic, and I think that's really cool. Malzino is clearly inspired by, well, Dracula, and I'm interested to see where they take it, and if we get some cool new blood mechanics when the expansion is released. Malzino for now is an A-tier monster. Now, we must wait and see. And so, that about does it. The ultimate Monster Hunter flagship tier list. Completely factual, 100% accurate, and not a single opinion on there that is wrong. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Not that it matters because I am of course right. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And why not follow me over on Twitter for more bad takes? Alright, that about does it for me. See you later folks. Have a good one.